Welcome to StarCraft II Amateur Hour, or as I like to think of it, the StarCraft Group Home. Find us on iTunes and on YouTube. The, Hi! The StarCraft what? <laughs> the StarCraft Group Home. Group Home? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you sent me a weird text message this week, like, we should rename the show StarCraft II Group Home. Yeah, because I kind of feel like that's what we are. What, even, what is a group home, actually? I don't know. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't really know. It's where um, uh, mentally challenged or just straight-out retarded people live. Oh, yeah. It's assisted living. Yeah. And I kind of feel like <laughs> the two of us staring at a computer talking about StarCraft is kind of what happens in a group home. It's kind of it's kind of funny to me how like how pumped up we have to get to do this. Like we just both ate like seven donuts and are yeah. drinking like you're drinking orange crush orange soda. Orange crush, yeah. <laughs> you're like so much sugar in us right now. Yeah, it's great. Um okay. Also this episode I'm going to try to stop saying faggot as much. I've received some complaints. And they're very well thought out, very well founded. Yeah, I actually read that email too. They could have it could have easily been like the normal forum goer kind of thing where it was like, Why do you say faggot so much? I hate blah 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 I'm a yeah, no, it was really thought out. No, it was very well thought out. Legitimate um thoughts. I tried to explain uh to some of the people that um I am an honorary faggot. Yeah. And so it's okay. Yeah. I think people should realize though that that like so we were in San Francisco. Last year? It was last year, right? Yeah, we're very... See, we're, we're like probably the most gay-friendly people you can fa- encounter. And we went to we went to this club called Tranny Shack. Oh, it was so great. And Tranny Shack was watched the best. And watched Bajork Night. So we're totally totally pro-faggot. It's okay. Well, no, I'm pro-gay. Like, the thing is, there's a difference between uh, gay people and faggots. Like, I'm a yeah. faggot, but I, you know, but I have sex with women. So I'm not gay. Yeah. But I'm weird. I'm, like, kind of feminine. I don't know if that... Kind of strange. I, I go to gay clubs and dance, and I don't mind that I get hit on... Um, I, the whole faggot gay thing doesn't really make sense to me, but that's okay. We should yeah. talk about the Zergs. Okay, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so hold on. I'm, I'm going to pause for one quick second. Okay. One quick second. I'm sorry. We're trying to get this whole, like, pound, 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 shove this shit down your throat. <laughs> I'm going to shove my shit down your yeah, throat. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Fag. All right. But, so, to follow up last week's... We have some announcements. No, we'll do announcements later. To follow up last week's Protoss vs. Protoss uh, Boarfest, uh-huh. hosted by Negative Sons, yeah. we're doing the cool race today. Zerg vs. Zerg! Yeah. Because everyone likes Zerg, except for idiots. That's not true, actually, but uh, whatever. Yeah. So... I've stopped arguing with him. <laughs> him has a name! <laughs> I'm Guns Akimbo! Yeah. So... I wanted to go through, I, I personally play Zerg, because I am one of the cool kids, as you know. And I just wanted to go through some early game basics, really. Uh, it's hard to explain all of your thoughts and all of the techniques that go into playing Zerg, and especially playing a Zerg mirror matchup. But I feel like uh, I win most games on ladder as Zerg, and I win them for very basic reasons. So I feel like... I can just do an episode, give a couple of tips as to what I do and what I feel, and people who play Zerg can learn from it, and also people who don't play Zerg can learn from uh, simple things of uh, how what uh, Zerg units work best and what situations and yeah. this and that and whatnot. So it's basically the Zerg version of what we did last week. Um, yeah, and the reason why we're focusing so much on early game stuff is I feel like a lot of like the a lot of n- amateur players have trouble getting past the early game, don't you think, in mirror yeah. matches? Because a lot of that is, you have the same units, you can't really like counter your opponent's stuff as easily as you can in other matches. Mm-hmm. So build order is less important, and it's more... I mean, build order is still important, but it's more about outthinking the, your opponent than it is about out-countering them. Um, you don't have to outthink. As the, the cool thing is Zerg vs. Zerg, if you really want to win, just be an asshole and drone rush and build a spine yeah. crawler. That's true, too. <laughs> You'll win almost every game on ladder because no one's going to expect it right away, even though everyone does it repeatedly. Guns of Kimbo and I were terrified before when we were thinking about the idea of SCV rushes. Yeah. Like, just build, just send all six SCVs because they can repair each other. Yeah. And they have five extra hit points, which is extra hit per SCV. Anyways. So, on this map right now, this is a game with me. And I'm going against player Solus, who is the red Zerg. And, you know, getting my little scout on. And what I'm scouting right now, this right here, right here is key. This is this right here is why I win almost all of my Zerg vs. Zerg games. Just spotting this Roach Worm going down at mm. this moment. And at this moment, 
because that and almost like so many zerg go roach first yeah uh, uh roach is a very go-to unit for zerg it's the core unit mm -hmm. uh it's the core unit in almost every matchup really the core early game unit and the moment i see that what most people don't realize so you're not ac actually let me what no, 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 you're fine. You can, I okay. mean, say what you're going to say. Go ahead. What most people don't realize is that going Roach first in ZVZ, unless you really plan on stockpiling your Roaches and protecting your main, protecting your base, um, just regular speedlings are going to kick your ass. Yeah. Uh, most people, like, like uh, a lot of things in Zerg versus Zerg don't make the same kind of sense that they would in a different matchup. Of you're thinking, oh, I have a heavier, stronger unit to against to go against a smaller, weaker unit, uh -huh. and in Zerg versus Zerg, that doesn't work out because you can get so many speedlings, especially on two base, so many more than the roaches, and get just a full surround on anything he might build, and just kick ass. Yeah. So we'll see how that works in a second, I guess. Yeah. But but all, but so really, you would say that um, that going roaches would force you to be more of a defensive build that you shouldn't really be aggressive if you're going for roaches well i mean you could really do whatever you want to do but in my personal opinion like r r this here and again this moment is something i always anticipate of i saw the roach den and almost all players on ladder below diamond league go oh i have the roach den i'm going for an early rush yeah and so because of that and because i know this i have beautiful foresight and i'm a beautiful human being you're so smart and charming just this small group of speedlings, you know, he's running his roaches out. I can so easily just right now, usually a lot of times in Zerg vs. Zerg, I'll just run my lings out at around the six minute mark. Yeah. Just run them out to the middle of the map, and there I go, and I go, I see, oh, you have all the roaches right here, right out in the open. I can get a full surround on you. Now, I just want, before you unpause, I just want to see one thing yeah. real quick. Uh, I just wanted to see that actually, what's interesting to me about this, too, is that he actually has more money in um, an army, an army than mm -hmm. you do right now. Yeah, and actually has he has a much higher supply than you do right yep. now, so I think that's just an important thing to see before yeah. we before you show this cool example. You're so educational. I'm very educational, smart. Yeah, I dropped out of school, and so it, as with any mirror matchup, you always want to just ensure that you have enough to deal with what's coming. Mm -hmm. But all right, so we're gonna talk about this in a little bit. But let's just watch this battle. Yeah. Just these Zerglings, and there's extra canal to reinforcement. It's almost overkill. I didn't even need these extras, but, uh, you know, it's the whole noob tactic of feeling not safe and building more than you need. Yeah. Um, but, I mean... So clearly that was good. Yeah, clearly you. that was good. He invested more money into roaches than mm -hmm. I did into Zerglings. He invested uh, more tech into it. He invested more gas. And now I have an obvious advantage. I have almost all of my Lings still. I lost maybe, what, 10... 12 out of that entire battle yeah i don't know i didn't count but yeah so that's just point number one for any zvz players out there cool so now i have a question okay would that have been different for him you think if he was defensive with those and like kept them on his used them and kept them like on his ramp sort of or something yes all right so and this is the second point and that's this is something that all players can take something from if you don't understand it already uh, a unit like a roach it's a very powerful unit, but they're one of those units that work best in a clump. Yeah. Just, uh... Like most range units. Exactly. Just, you know, you have to look at them almost as a stalker ball. Yeah. You're, that don't shoot air and that aren't as cool and don't have, don't have blink and aren't a really cheesy... Uh, that aren't as cool. Idea. Yeah, exactly. Not as cool as stalkers. Cooler than stalkers. Not Are you tricking me? <laughs> yeah, it's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> I have like I'm on so much sugar I can't think shit. I feel hot. Did I did I tell you that in order to prepare for today, like I'm so used to thinking as a Protoss and like um in order to get like into the mood for Zerg for Zerg because I really didn't want to do this episode. <laughs> I actually pooed. I took poo and rubbed it all over myself. Really? To feel like a Zerg. It's nice you now match the smell of my apartment. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, what Zerg that's the one thing about Zergs, right? Yeah. They are cooler but they smell like poo. Yeah. So, all right, roaches, I, in my opinion, are a great unit to store and build up. So, say, usually I feel like if you're going to go roach in a game, you don't really want to push out unless you really see that your opponent's been greedy as nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, even at that point, you could still build so many zerglings so quickly that unless you're pushing out with a mass amount of roaches, you're not going to get that much done. But say, you know, you're going for, say this player wants to go one base tech. He wants to go one base mutalisk. Getting out, you know, 
four to six roaches, put them right in the ramp. Zerglings can't get us around. The only way to break it is with more roaches. Mm -hmm. You're already at a slight advantage there. Totally. Um, anytime I go in for an attack with roaches, uh -huh. say say I'm like, okay, I'm going roaches game. Fuck it. I'm going to risk everything. Really, the proper way of attacking is just kind of taking a corner, being like, okay, well, I'm going to keep my roaches with their back to the wall every possible moment because yeah. the one thing you don't want is for Zerglings to get a surround on you. The moment a Zerglings surround happens is the moment you're dead. So even if you come into, you want to attack this expansion, just move, keep moving, get along All the, the way up here and just... Right. And, and you're really good behind... Wait, right there is yeah, perfect. Yeah, exactly. When or, you're behind minerals... Um, with range units, it's it's the same thing. It's really good to be behind minerals. Yeah, and there's times where I'll see, okay, he brought everything back up his ramp. I use it the same way a sentry force field would be yeah. used. I bring four roaches right up here to the ramp just so they're in a small clump. They're just shooting, killing uh, lings that can't get us around, and I'm bringing more units in to just take out the expansion. Yeah. Uh, there, you know, A roach push can be effective, but I feel like most players just have this whole attack move mentality of, I have roaches, they're stronger than zerglings. So to s simplify that um, a little bit into a, like a, a single point, I think the statement is that um, when you're using, in general, when you're using range units, that you want to limit, versus melee units, that you want to limit the surface area exactly. as much as possible. Um, it's a very important strategically. And in specific, in this case, with roaches versus zerglings, you want to like when you're if you if you're on a ramp, you only have that frontal surface area that's available. Exactly. And now this opponent is just in a world of trouble. He's yeah. on one base. I'm on two. Uh, there's, you know, our economies. He's not going to be able to match my economy. So actually, the short of some. So, uh, I actually look, can I talk? Right? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> um, if try. I can figure out how. Um, I actually just thought of something. Okay. Um, and this might be a little bit of a noobish question. I don't know that much about Zerg. But so we we're just talking about how um, Zerglings are better, obviously, in the open. And Stalkers are better um, on a, at a choke. Do you or think, roaches. I mean, yeah, Stalkers. <laughs> yeah. Stalker roaches. Um, do you think that um, that in this way that maybe if you're going to try to go hatchery first, that it might be better to get Speedlings because you're going to be forced down your ramp? Or do you think that that doesn't really matter? Um, or do you think, like, if you wanted to attack off of one base or something like that, or go pool first, that you might get roaches because they can hold the rear ramp better? Does that make sense, or is that yeah? Not well, okay. Really... Well, here's the thing: uh, with with hatchery first, or even with a, a faster expansion for Zerg, I feel like it depends the kind of game you're playing, yeah. uh, and it depends what you see. So. I usually like to expand quickly. Mm -hmm. I also like to expand quickly as Zerg because of the whole larvae management. Of Again, uh, back to my point, and then I'll work into your point. Because I have the second hatchery, I have four to seven more larvae at every moment that I need, which means that at, at any moment I can easily pump out seven extra drones or seven extra army to hold off any incoming push. Um, with going hatchery first... It's just so easy and cheaper because you're able. You don't need to have a pro proper macroeconomics of yeah. knowing when to have gas. Right. It's so much easier just to get lings, even on a noob level. It's so much easier to just get lings. Yeah. Um, you know, but so, and, and it, it gives you the ability to be to be aggressive. So it's easier to get a whole bunch of speedlings, still have an economy, uh, back at home, and those speedlings really keep the other player contained. I, I don't really. There's sometimes there's instances where you'd, I'd say, it, like if you're going one base, you want to build roaches to hold your ramp, or if you're going two base, but you're going for some kind of tech that you want to build roaches and just keep them at home mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, maybe push one or two out to threaten them a little bit, but keep a majority at home just to really hold off any attack and, and have a mobile defensive unit. But it, I was just thinking, you know, it all depends what you see too. Again, like if you see, it, it, when I see a roach warren. I like to build speedlings because I know they're on ladder. They're usually coming for an attack, so yeah. I'll just beat them in the open. It's sort of cool to correlate that to last week's episode with uh, PvP. How seeing the Roach Warren is kind of like in PvP when you see the um, the Cybernetics Core. Okay, yeah, it's very exactly. similar. It's very similar. Of like, oh, now I know I have a quick advantage on him. And this right here, I don't want to make a point of this because there's not really a huge point. It's it's a different point than this episode's about. I'm sacrificing a lot of these lings, keeping some alive to still keep a threat. Mainly just to force him to keep having to pump units right now out of fear. 
Whereas back at home, I'm about to be pumping pure drones for a little while to get my economy going. And that's so you're gonna be way ahead because you're on two bases. Yeah. Now. And now this is you know and and so also like I see him going for their tech here, so I know he's going tech off one base, and. Really, the biggest fear at that moment when you see Lair Tech in a ZVZ, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much all of ZVZ is a build up to Lair Tech. Yeah. So everything you do early, if both of you survive at that moment, it stops being about the balance of pushing back and forth. It becomes about who's going to get the Mutalisks out first. Yeah. And so that's primarily, uh, yeah, for Mutalisks, right? Yeah. Okay. Y usually in a ZVZ. I mean, that's the way it should be. So I actually just saw something really interesting on the production overlay. It, did you just build a hydra stan? No. That's an extractor. No, before that. Or was that him? He hasn't built anything. Or did you cancel it? No. Did you just build it? I swear to God, I saw one. I would never build a hydra stan. What's in your main base? Like, my main base? Yeah. What's that? It's, it's a lure. Hold on. Let's, can we go back? Sure. Whatever you want to do, honey. No, I swear. I thought I saw something on there. Okay. <laughs> What's that? That's Lair. Oh, Lair. Lair That's not a Hydra Den. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll fast forward for a second so okay. everyone can... Uh... God, it shows how much I know about Zerg. Yeah. That the Lair was a Hydra Den. Lair kind of looks the cool same looking. a little bit. A little bit. On the little picture overlay. Um. So, y you know, usually as, as Zerg, you're scouting at all times to see, mm -hmm. oh my god, is he getting Lair? Is he getting Lair? So right now in this game, it's like, okay, well he has Lair. That's fine. But... I really need to just scout for the spire, but now you're seeing a hydra list done, and this is a quick lesson. I feel like it's almost a little bit of a noob lesson. Um, this is an even more severe example for me of oh, if you put the roach horn down, I pretty much know that I can beat your attack. Yeah, he's putting a hydra list den down, which in ZVZ, I'm sure there's times that there's a use for a hydra list den. Yeah, just out of my thou like. Uh, like 600 games on ladder. I've never seen that use yet yeah. in ZVZ. So this guy must be really, really good at, at versus Terran and Protoss because he sucks at Zerg. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, and it's kind of strange. He doesn't see what I have yet. I, again, I think this is the common mistake of building go-to core units. Yeah. That doesn't fully work in ZVZ. So... He built his roaches. That's a go-to mm -hmm. core early game unit, but it worked against him because I built a couple of more speedlings. Yeah, uh, he's building hydralis because okay, well that covers any roach push, that covers any air push. He'll feel safe from mutas. Exactly. Know? It's it's feeling safe at that moment, and double evo chamber going down. But back home, you know, I know we both went in lair tech, so I have my spire down. Yeah. So right now in my head I'm like, all right, we're racing the spire, we're racing the yeah. mutes. I'm gonna get some mutes out, and uh, you know, you know, even if I don't beat you to it fully, we're pretty even on lair timing. So, so you really feel like, like, um, in general, um, that even though there's probably situational uses for them, that Roach Warren, early Roach Warren, and early Hydrogen are usually probably mistakes in Zerg for Zerg. I'm not gonna say mistakes. Uh, just in the current way the game is played, yeah. especially in uh, below Diamond level, mm -hmm. I just feel that it's so much easier and especially easier for for people who aren't even that good for people who don't want to have to worry so much about the micro mechanics it's just yeah. easier to get speedlings against roaches you don't have to you can just pump more out well i mean also like i watch a lot of gsl i know you don't haven't watched as much as me this season but like um, most of the zvzs i see are doing what you're doing here they're not doing any yeah. sort of roach hydra thing so i think even at like above um above uh diamond level like it seems like they're doing pretty there's more a little bit more of like roaches and banelings in some of those games yeah but um definitely not so many hydras and now you're seeing exactly what should happen in zvz mulus come out you're dealing with direct harassment to his economy queens are the number one prime target uh sometimes you know especially with a lot of noobs i find they're like okay i have mutalis now i can go after his army mutalis are not good against any yeah. zerg unit at all it takes like 14 years for a, a mutalis to kill a, a roach it yeah. takes uh it actually does take 14 years yeah and it takes really 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 long uh, i grew old in that time yeah uh and then you know if not then they'll go for drones and drones are cool but in my opinion queens are like the number one thing because just just think about the the math behind it of okay he has three larvae if i kill both his queens he only has three larvae so right now 
for the next for the next cycle, he can only build three units from this hatchery. Three. I have That's an, it. I have an interesting point. Before you go on pause, okay. Um, you know how like there's some like autistic kids that are like really good at like math or something like that. Yeah. Like they could solve like Einstein's theory of relativity, but they can't do any. They can't tie their shoelaces. Mm-hmm. I think mutalisks are like the Zerg version of that. But what what they're autistic for is killing probes. In, yeah. in ZVP. Yeah, they're really good at it. They're, but they're but they're really bad at everything else. Yeah, they're pretty. I mean, well, they're great in mass, but re- before yeah. that mass hits, I mean, I guess I wonder if you combine like if I wonder if they're like. 80 autistic kids together if it was like a massive group home yeah if they would actually be powerful somehow yeah. I feel they, like they'd get like the crazy chicks crazy I feel bitches. like when I feel like when mutes hang out by themselves like in flocks and there's not a battle flocks like, of mutalisks like awesome do- band like they're doing <laughs> like they're doing they're doing math in their head of how many bounces it takes to kill probes yeah like and it's like really autistic it's like seven Whoa, bounces I never yeah they shoot little things you know so that I it's... always thought it was a little ball I never saw that it's like a uh Klingon Warblade. Yeah. <laughs> Mutalisks are Klingons. Yeah. That's cool. The Overmind incorporated the Klingons into the swarm and what came out was Mutalisks. Yeah, that's awesome. I always like Klingons. Klingons and seagulls. Klingon plus seagull makes Mutalisk. All right, so the party targeting here is the Queens because that just limits on what he can actually build. And when I see this right here, Hydralis, it's like, okay, you might have fended off my attack. Right now, the first thought, the first thought in any Zerg's head should be like, ha ha ha, you idiot. You bought, you built Hydralist, you retard? Yeah. Like, seriously, you built Hydralist against me. And you'll see, if you don't know about this already, you'll see why in a second. Uh, my Baneliness is forming the moment I saw Hydralist on the map. And it's a tough situation, right? Because this exact situation can happen in a lot of games without the person building a Hydralist den. It happens a lot when say I beat my opponent to Lair Tech, mm-hmm. and he sees that I have Lair earlier than him, he sees that I have Spire earlier than him, he knows I have Expansion earlier than him, he knows that I'm just ahead in teching You're a better tree. person than him. Yeah, that I have more love in my heart, I yeah. have so much more semen inside like people your that po- I've met. Your poo smell is fiercer, more yeah. fierce. I high-five people under the little divider on the toilet. Yeah. So... It's the whole thing of like, oh shit, you know, he's doing so much. <laughs> Sorry, the high five under the toilet. <laughs> Actually, I, I kind of did that at work yesterday. That's really good. Yeah, there's this guy that I'm oh. cool with. Um, <laughs> so, uh, oh, fuck. so it's an understandable fear, but again, this is all very fear-based reactions of, okay, this guy's doing a lot better than I am. And so you think, what would keep me safe? What would keep me safe right now? And it's a very common problem with Zerg on multiple levels. And I just want to focus in for one quick second because this point is so vast for Zerg yeah. players. I'm all ears. I'm listening to okay. you. Okay. That fear. Fear is the mind killer. <laughs> it's true. I'm Frank Herbert. Yeah. Back from the dead. Do not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Something, something, something else. That's no, a but cool poem. It's not a poem. Well, it was a poem or a song or something. Well, it's also from Dune. Yeah, I know. That's what I meant. Yeah. So... Oh, oh, yeah, the recital, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, the yeah, the whole thing. The whole, uh, whatever it's called. But. The Bene Gesserit. Yeah. Wow. Code. You know Dune, too. Yeah, I like cool. the book. So. Oh, I, now I'm all distracted because <laughs> I'm thinking. I, I, you, know, you know what just happened in my head? <laughs> okay. What just happened in my head? I was thinking, yeah, Dune rocks. And I was thinking, like, fucking people who like Star Wars, uh, fuck them. I like, like Star Wars, too, though. Yeah, but seriously, Dune is, like. Way cooler, can, yeah, it's exactly. true. So. Anyways, fear kills Zerg. Uh Zerg are the race. You're not supposed to have fear of anything. You're supposed to be like, I'm naked in the street and I'm going to suck my own thing. And I don't give a shit because I'll kick your ass, motherfucker. Yeah. Right? Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So fear kills Zerg. Fear kills Zerg on so many levels. Fear kills Zerg on just uh, on right from the beginning of the game. Uh, One thing that wins me has been winning me so many more games is I've understood the power of the anti-fear. Yeah. It's very strong. Um, you know, like Zerg gets nervous and they build units, they build Zerglings, they build roaches, like, oh my God, I got to build something. Yeah. But all you got to do is build drones and just scout. Yeah. And I build so many drones in my games now, like yeah. so many drones, like holy shit, tons of mounts. And I don't build units until the last moment because the fear doesn't bother me anymore. Yeah. And my too busy sucking your own yeah, thing. And my macro game is so much better. It's crazy. And this is just an extension of that. Of he sees I have he, now he sees I have something. And he's like, oh my god, I need to be safe right now. And so he's building Hydralis, which are a terrible unit against other units of Zerg. Yeah. 
um, when really the recommended path right now is being like, okay, well, I he's going to have map control. There's not much I can do about this. Mm-hmm. So let me just shore up on my base a little bit. Let me build a few spore colonies if I need to. I need to, you know, have an extra queen or two for extra transfusion. Queen, spore colonies, yeah, I think and that's just better. macro up hard. Mm-hmm. Don't make hydras and and fight hit and fight with air as well. So yeah. like, he can easily get a spire, build a couple of corruptors. He might not have map control because of the corruptors. Yeah, but now he can start pushing out with corruptors and other kind of ground based army or corruptors and mutilus, whatever he wants to do, and just secure his macro game. And then re-engage me at the mutilist level. So I think we're getting we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. We should show why the yeah. hydras are so bad because people are probably like, "What are they talking about?" Yeah. Um. Because hydras are usually pretty good against flying things. So yeah, they're let's, great against let's flying talk, things. Let's, let's really show. We can continue the analysis after we show why it's a mistake. Yeah, and and you know even especially with ledges like this on Lost Temple, these hydras can go all around everywhere, and yeah. you know they're quick on the creep. Which is all cool. I feel all. like also we should that it would be very in theme if we told everybody uh, the SFSF in the toilet at the airport story at the end of the episode. All right, so, cool. Let's do it. We're yeah. gonna share a story with you guys sip, sip, later, sip, 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 sip. and it goes along with how much we like faggots. Yeah, <laughs> you said it, not me. I know it's okay. Um, so Baneling's morphing. Just a small group. There's what, fourteen here. Yeah, which is you know enough. Yeah, it's good. No, there's it's a good amount of banelings. You have a lot. Yeah, I always like how they slowly morph. It's such yeah. a cool animation too. It is really cool. I like banelings. Banelings definitely, definitely a cool unit. And so, uh, you know, for anyone who's ever in the advantage situation, you know, any downtime if you're in an advantage situation where the guy's contained, mm -hmm. always use that to uh, secure your next expansion. Uh, one of the basic rules of any ZVZ is. Two bases are greater than one. Three bases are greater than two. Yeah. Uh, regardless of the economy, just for the unit production, just for the larvae that you'll have. Mm -hmm. And so these guys all just going down there, hanging, hanging hot. But still, right now there's what? What is that? Uh, Twelve hydralis. Um, there's gonna become more coming. So f it's pretty even right now. Ninety-two food to hundred food. So I don't know how many actual hydras. Uh, it looks like fourteen hydras. 14 yeah. Hydras and 15 Zerglings. Hydras cost a lot of food, don't they? Yeah, Hydras are very, very expensive. So right now, I'm drawing the Hydras to the front with all the Nudalists. And you're about to just see the normal sickness of what Baneling do to Hydras. Yeah, it's crazy. Baneling versus Hydra is the most uneven matchup of the game. So hold on, I actually want to see something cool. Let's pause for a second. I want to actually analyze the spend this year on the, the spenditure. Okay. For, to have let's a new word about introduced money. to the English language. Can we get? Let's go back a few seconds to mm -hmm. before that fight. I'm actually really interested to watch. Actually, no. We want to go to lost units, lost resources. Okay. Okay. So I want to. We want to look at how these how these bars change just for the dramatic effect of how they change. Okay. Okay. Wait. So let's look at where we are now. Right now, um, Solus has lost 25 units. We want to look at resources. Resources right, lost. Thanks. Cool. Resources. He's lost more. That's cool. He's lost more so far. That's fine. Ending. So we're. So would you look at like. 1875 to 1450. Yeah. And again, cool. this game we're not showing because because it's an right. even yeah. game. It's just, I'm ahead this game, the whole game, but it, this game just has good points to make a oh, I'm I ahead. think that's totally the important thing with this episode, yeah. too, though, okay. for you guys. We're trying to show some, some Zergs how to, how to suck their own thing. Yeah. Okay. So. Look how much shorter your bar is getting. And it's actually not that your bar is getting shorter. My bar is actually getting longer because I'm losing banelings. Yeah, it's actually that his bar is getting so much longer than yours, so much faster that it looks like yeah. yours is getting shorter. Yeah, it, it exponentially. Yeah. Um, you know, like like you can't find a better. There's nothing better to waste to use banelings on, in my opinion, than yeah. hydralis. Totally. Because uh, you could take just take you get one baneling. You know, oh, actually, Una, the way it works is you need like two, three banelings on a group of hydralis, and it will pop everything it hits around them. Three like three banelings could have taken out half that army, really, to be honest. Yeah. Um, just. I'm not playing a very good micro game, so I'm just like, all right, 20 banelings. No, and you don't even need to hear. I, I don't think even you should. The round of the best thing you're doing is managing your base right now. Th yeah. That attack did everything that you needed to do. Exactly. Um, Gives me more time to drone up. And again, this is just, you know, it's the whole thing of the mutilists. The mutilists aren't winning the game right now. The mutilists aren't really doing anything. The mutilists, all they are doing is provoking more hydralists, provoking him to keep making the same mistake over and over. And to provoke those out, to kill them with banelings, and then just use the mutilus to just go fight the drones. So would you say that definitely, that if you're Zerg, that 
sucking your own thing is like a pacifier for fear. It is. It's like a baby pacifier. I wouldn't for even fear. say it's for Zerg. Like, okay, like when I'm nervous at work. Uh huh. You like you you know when you're at work and you're nervous and you go into the bathroom and you touch it. Yeah. Like just to feel good. Yeah, just to feel good, to feel confident. Yeah. It's the same exact thing. Same like a pacifier for fear. Yeah. And you know you're not supposed to touch it in the work bathroom, and you always yeah. wonder, like, like I wonder if there's a video camera in these bathrooms, like this, like, what if there is? What if this is weird? What if somebody walks in right yeah, now? Yeah, so you try to, like, mask it of just really, like, of, like peeing aggressively. Yeah. Because that's more normal. Yeah, much more normal. So, again, you know, repeat right here. Rinse, repeat. Yeah. Every Bane link kills every Hydralis. Nothing new. And, yeah. And I like that... But also, there's an interesting point here too that I was, I was that, that that pops into my head. Pop. Um, which is that when you when you get so many mutas, a lot of times maybe the Zerg will get Hydra's thinking that it's the counter. You can almost try to force this a lot of times. I feel like. Well, any Zerg, honestly, who understands uh -huh. a little bit of how bad Zerg, how bad Hydras are to to Banlings. Yeah. Won't just do that. Won't, won't like, fall for it. You know, like anytime I play a good game against any Zerg player, uh, Hydras are just not involved. And yeah. I, that's, you know, you could t say maybe that's something that should be balanced. Maybe Hydras should be an option. And they are an option. But, it, I mean, Hydras might be all right if you're like, if you're desperate for some extra mobile defense yeah. in your base. But, I mean, they're just countered so easily of like, you know, Zerglings are so cheap. Getting I, wonder a had, so I wonder if you could. had Hydras and Banelings and you try to put your Banelings in front to stop their Banelings. Or no, is it just too much micro? It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why would you do that? Why, why would you, you do that? that? Yeah. Just build mutas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Build anything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll go on to... Um, we're going to find a second game to kind of reiterate some points, maybe find some alternate points. Sure. Yeah, and again, this is all just early game stuff, and there's so many ways you could take it, but, you know, maybe... I think, the, I think, I think the good thing about these episodes, or you know, I, that I like doing this kind of stuff, is that it's... It's about the thought process of what you should be thinking in these hard matchups, which mirror matchups are always some of the hardest because there's so much. But they're so easy, though, and I wish people would take advantage yeah. of how easy it is. Like, if you're going against an opponent playing a race that you are familiar with, you understand the rhythms. Yeah. You understand what works against you. You understand the timings. You understand if you're going for something now that he's probably thinking something similar. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, like for me, mirror matchups, again, they're my favorite matchup. I know what they're going to do. Yeah. Like just you know, where no, it's Protoss, I don't know all. Like I don't the, like the abilities. Like I know all the abilities, but I don't understand the minutia of them. Of you like, don't understand the motivation the, the, and and the subtle the subtle details of like why you time it a little bit later than this. Yeah. Um, whereas you know, with, with your own race, you understand so much more the natural timings, and you understand so much more of the matchups in general. Of like, it, it, you go over and over of you know. Okay, so I have ten roaches. He has twelve roaches. I lost the game. Yeah. It's not that hard to understand, you know. That's you're not I, like, well, stalkers are overpowered. You're like, no, you know, these ro these units are the same exact thing. He has yeah. two more. Yeah, you know. So that's why that that's why I like talking about these kind of situations because I feel like for smart players, there's so much more. There's so much more to think about even in mirror matchups. Uh, more ways to take advantage of being smart. Yeah, and not being dumb. All right, so we'll be right back. Okay, bye. All right, we're on to a second game and. This game is a game between myself again and player uh, Glycogen, and it was a really kind of close game for me, but we're not going to worry about the game itself. Uh, the reason I chose this game, there's just a lot of small micro points and back and forth that I'm going to kind of fast forward to at points. There's some highlights. Some, yeah, there, there's a lot of highlights that I just want to use to reiterate some of the points we made about how cool Zerg is and how really bad everything everyone else is i like reiterating yeah because i'm so nervous all the time that reiterating calms me down <laughs> it's like you're oh what do uh, catholic people do what's the chant called the uh, i don't know oh come on you have, yeah you i know, know i have catholic, catholic people, people in um, my family but no I, oh, I have no one catholic in my family you, 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 the rosemary beads the, um rosary the rose is that the rosary repeat? i don't know what it's actually called the repeat the rosary repeat yeah the rosary remix let's call it i just repeat the uh the prima strategy guide a starcraft one <laughs> uh yeah. introduction every time i'm nervous whenever i'm nervous i repeat quotes from the protest campaign from starcraft one really yeah <laughs> like what just i don't know random quotes from tacitar 
<laughs> I am Tassadar. I am cool. Yeah, Tassadar was the coolest, man. He was kind of cool. I'll give you that. So, scouting. Uh, one small thing in ZVZ I always find is extremely important, especially on shorter maps, is to get an... Uh, my preference, personally, is to get an earlier scout on. There are so many assholes. Proxy hatchery! Ladder. Yeah. That would be cool. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, there are just, like... Usually, I don't know, I find that on ladder, every ZVZ rushes, you know, like, uh, every Zerg on ladder in a short map. Just speaking, like, of, speaking, of, speaking of Zerg and rushes, um, you don't get to complain about anything anymore, because actually I'm going to make it, let everybody know that you actually do proxy hatch me. Well, I do, because sometimes it's the only way to know how to win. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because, all right, here's the thing. Like, we have a long training tradition of... Uh, between Guns and Kimbo and I, like when we do, when we like get really into StarCraft for a day, we play like seventeen games of PVZ, like and it's like a really intense match. It's like all close and even. He'll like proxy hatch my main, like. Well, because here's the thing: you're a gr like you're an incredible StarCraft player. You're better than me on many levels, but you have you have one issue where you get too focused on certain things yeah. and you have a lot of trouble checking all your back doors. Yeah. So, I, so when I'm desperate, I just exploit that. I'd be like, all right, well, he's so focused on kicking my ass in every other way, he's probably has no pylon in the back of his base. Yeah. You're like Proxy my, hatch. You're like my mom. Yeah. Really? She does that? Yeah. Your mom fingers your hatch? Exploits my back doors. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no. Usually that's a dad's job. That's cool. Yeah, I know. Your mom's a hornball. Yeah. No, right. my mom's great. So who the hell's getting... Someone's getting banelings. All right. Yeah, let's talk. Okay. So right now, Glycogen's... You know, he's... He's doing good. He's got some Zerglings. He uh, hasn't scouted them yet. And we're about to have some Zerglings for Zerglings. This is me kind of doing my... He didn't build a couple roaches and run across the map. Yeah, no. So you could I, kill him. Right now, we're both, I think, doing the same thing of, like, running your Zerglings right to the middle of the map. Of, like, am I going to intercept, like, a, a rush? And we both are about to intercept each other's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... That's why overload back. placement is so is so key, right? It's huge. Uh, uh, it, in, especially in ZVZ... Uh, because there's not early air units out, mm -hmm. you can so easily just keep overlords alive. Like yeah, I love to send an overlord to like these sections of the map. Yeah, and totally. Anywhere where you see the rush coming as soon as possible, or the attack coming as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh, and Zerg has so many tools for map control. Yeah. Creep Great tumors tools. and mutalisks and overlords. It's crazy. And so now something that a lot of ZVZ players know and hate is when you're going Zerglings for Zergling is it's almost kind of the same race as uh, the whole like Zerg game up until Lair Tech Inspire. In Zergling versus Zergling, it's kind of a race for who gets Banelings first and yeah. who has the best micro with them. Well, this reminds me a lot. This kind of stuff reminds me a lot of ZVZ and Brood War, where you had Mutes and Scourge. Yeah, it's almost the same relationship as Zerglings and Banelings in StarCraft Two. Yeah, and right here, right here is a terrible moment for these little red Zerglings because. They're actually trapped yeah. by the bluelings, so they're trying to get away, but they can't because the bluelings have trapped them. Yeah, and this is uh, there's so it's like it's like it's like um, Hebrews in the Holocaust. Yeah, kind of like that. Where they're really trying to escape, but they can't because there's Nazi blue Nazi zerglings surrounding them. Yeah, and that's exactly how you want to live your life. Um, that's exactly how you want to play zergling and baneling game. Like uh, Glycogen's doing it perfectly. Yeah, of you use your Zerglings to kind of choke off, to, to prevent the guy from running away. Yeah. And then bring your Banelings straight up the front. Yeah. So he's actually, do, he's doing it really well right here. In this you use moment. your Zerglings like, like Nazis, because Kibbo yeah. said it. Not me. And so one, one Baneling died, and almost all those Zerglings died. No, that's so great. That's, that's great. Yeah. And Banelings are, like, that's actually, like, as a spectator, as somebody who doesn't play Zerg, I'm sure this is much more tense for you as a Zerg player. Yeah. But, like, I love watching Zerg vs. Zerg of pros when they go, when they decide to go Zerg with Baneling. To me, it's just so exciting, which is why I liked watching ZVZ and Brood War 2. Yeah. The Muta Scourge play. Now, okay, I don't want to focus too much on this because I just want to focus on the points we made before a little bit. Yeah. But if you are in a in a situation where you're going Zergling Baneling vs. Zergling Baneling, which does happen a lot, uh, there is only one, there is one single way to play it. There is one way to, one to please way. this woman. Mm-hmm. And that is, <laughs> just quit. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's what I do sometimes yeah. when somebody's outplaying me. Like, just talking about the pro games, when you see the pros do it, they do it so incredibly of, 
um, the way to do it is you have to separate one Zergling at a time. Yeah. And it's go crazy. after each individual Bane Bane Ling. It's not Because if you, you know, you do not want any, you don't want, like, if, if you have one Zergling force one Baneling to explode, you just won that battle big. Yeah. Um, and you have to keep doing that for every single Baneling. So you'll see here in this battle, right here, I do my one little new version of that. Of I have a bunch of Ling streaming in and being like, okay, there's not many more Banelings. And then there's a quick last second split off of that one guy. And only two Zerglings died right there. Yeah. And the Baneling is gone. But still, uh, sadly, he has... He's out numbers Maybe still. by like one. Yeah. <laughs> but even, you know, uh, six Zerlings beat set, uh, beat five and the same yeah. no, the same deal. Yeah, I, it's so exciting. I love this. I love watching this matchup when it, yeah. goes, when it goes like this. And so you see me countering a little bit noob. Like, this game really is a pro game on my part, and I really should have a lost. A pro game? It's a pro game on yeah. your part? I'm so excited. It's a pro game on my part. Uh, I respond with a Roach Warren. And I respond with a Roach Warren. Why? Because... Roaches can absorb Baneling, Baneling damage. And at this point, it's like, okay, he has the Baneling advantage. I mean, I can build a Baneling nest, but I really didn't want to play that game at that moment. Yeah. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but if I do that, usually it's because I might, well, it puts it's a lot late night and I'm tired and I'm like, I'm not... You don't want to turn it into like a micro this. war yeah. when you're tired. Like, a lot of times, I can understand that because, um, I mean, a lot of times you don't like, you don't like to put it all into micro if you feel like you can make better decisions. Yeah. And these roaches are being used right here. They're not, they're not for pushing reasons. Yeah, they're defensive. They are mer merely to be like, okay, I can try to keep a wall here. Maybe I'm pushing up because I'm nervous. This is this is maybe a, this is a pre no fear guns again though possibly. Yeah, this it's is a possibly bit. a blunder. Yeah, it's an older game, so I don't exactly remember. But um, but no, I think that I think that um, it is does really seem like when you have roaches supplementing a force of speedlings. That the roaches can be effective. Yeah, but it's a great combination. Definitely not. Speedlings. Definitely not. Um, when it's just roaches versus just speedlings, it seems like a poor choice. I feel like. Yeah, from what I've seen so far. Now these speedlings are gonna get right the perfect round. Exactly what I was talking before, about before. Not to do is exactly what happened to me in this game. Yeah. But that's okay though because it's not. It's still a great example for people to see. Yeah, exactly. It's not about me. Because we all know you that you're the sexiest Zerg around. Yeah. So it's not like you need to prove it. And, and you know, that situation is so great for him. He has these fast units on the map. He knows he just killed whatever I had for defense. Now he can come in and just do whatever the hell he wants. Um, putting me so far behind. He's getting a Spire. Uh, I don't have anything yet except for Roaches. Do I even see he has a Spire? Now I do because I'm sacking Overlord. Um, and this is like that moment of, oh shit. And this is okay. So, so this is a game is a little bit of an example of what I was. Uh, Did of, you see the spire though? I, uh, uh, no, I don't think I saw the spire, but I saw their attack. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I already know that he. That is that's a, what he would be getting. Yeah, gotcha. I mean, I don't know it, but I'm assuming. Yeah. And so here, so right now, roaches are being used defensively, and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Go back to your choke. Yeah. Um. So this game is going to be a little bit more of the focus on the example of okay, he beat you to he beat you to lair. He beat you to. Mutalisk, how are you going to handle this? Yeah. And it's not the best example, but it's a lot better example than the going Hydralisk example from before. Yeah. So you see me putting my lair down, my uh, my uh, Spire down frantically right now. Yeah, I so see you just started it before yeah. while you are speaking. Knowing that. So you oh you're, you accept the fact that you're going to be behind on Mutalisk count. Yeah. Um, But you go for the Mutas anyway. Yeah. And really, in this situation too, um, it really should have put down a evolution chamber. Got some spore colonies up right away. Like, Would it even be a good idea to get like an extra queen at each base, or no? Whatever you can afford, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, extra queens are great because a they're great against air, and b you can save up for transfusion. Yeah. Oh, can I make one little point? Uh, I don't know why this popped into my head right now. Can you pause sure. for a second? Okay. Just give a quick pause. Um, go to your natural. Okay. I always want to. Always try to remember to tell people this, but I, but I always forget. Do you, you see where guns can? Where you chose to make your third extractor? Yeah. Whenever you're in a situation like this and you have like a vulnerable extractor or a safe extractor, it's always good to take the safe extractor. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't think about this kind of stuff, but that's it's it's a minor point. Um, no, it's not. A, it's a huge point. Yeah. Because 
it's so much easier for him to be like, I'm going to sit right here and you can't get me easy. Right. First, I'm going to sit here where you can get, you know, units out quickly. Right. Because if your extractor goes down, your gas production stops, your drones that are going from there, they are vulnerable. Um, it opens up so many doors. Just so, something to think about. I know yeah. it's a sidetrack from what you were saying, yeah. but it's okay. You're good at that. <laughs> I just always, I always try to remember to tell them that, and then I never do. And I yeah. finally remember it. Cool. There's a happy, oh, there's a happy little destroyed town down there. Happy and destroyed. Yeah. Some things are happy being destroyed. Yeah. Like women. That's true. <laughs> you know what? You're right. I will yeah. make fun of you for that. Okay. And so here he is going for priority targets, obviously. Yeah. Uh. And this is the moment of like, oh shit. Yeah. Oh shit. And so it's like, the only option for me at this point is like, okay, well, my drones can move Yeah, so you <laughs> pull, you, I was going to say, so you pull your drones. Yeah, well, and even though he's following, getting some stuff, um, even just running them back and forth. And you're making, you it looks like you're it. making corruptors. Yeah. Because, all right, and, and this is exactly why, this is my thought process. Okay. Of, he has three, four, five, six metalisks. Uh, I was way behind in this whole game. Yeah. My gas is extremely low my minerals are high and so i need something that can i need to just stabilize right now i need yeah. something that can kill the the mutilisks and corruptors are a good answer to that yeah uh, at the same time uh i'm thinking how can i leverage this moment mm -hmm. and if you see here all these roaches all these roaches at this point are practically useless in my base there's no reason to have them yeah they're not they're just gonna anything. sit they're just gonna sit there and be like hi mutilisks yeah and so yeah, you know, it, it, it's a couple things at once of just introducing stall tactics of, I know these roaches are going to die. No, it's totally, it's totally um, a good point. You're making time, you're sort of making time for yourself right yeah. now. Yeah, and in some ways hoping I could pull his mutilus back. Yeah. While I make more corruptors, while I put down an evolution chamber, while I put down spore colonies, where I get enough corruptors to hold back, a, a mix of corruptors and spore colonies to hold, keep my bases safe, and yeah. then go back to mutilus teching. So, no, I'm actually just a little curious about the, the Corruptor thing still that I mentioned. Okay. Do you find that Corruptors work well against Mutas, or, um... Because I know that they don't get the, they don't get the bonus damage versus Mutalisks. Yeah, well, you know, there's some, some micro involved where you have to keep them spread apart. Yeah, they're just tanky enough that they can handle the Muta shots and deal yeah, enough damage, well, or... Like, here's the thing. Corruptors... <sighs> corruptors are not ideal in that yeah. situation. Uh, obviously... What what I what is ideal is having enough mutalisks yeah. to counter it. Um, corruptors are kind of that oh shit moment. Yeah, it's almost like the hydralisk, except it's not as vulnerable. Yeah, uh, it, it's just it really it's just a way of having a mobile force in my base, a little spread out to handle a small group of mutalisks. So so like I don't recommend it. I recommend having mutalisks. Yeah, um, but at the same time, in a bind. Keeping spread out, not having them clumped up against the group. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll they'll rape them. Really? L look, I, sorry. Can I, I see just, some battles of that too. Coming yeah, up. I want to see that. Because what are the stats on the corruptors? Actually, how much actually, damage do they actually do? Did I? I might have even pushed back. A, I think you a skipped too. that because you were looking at the roaches. We yeah. can go back and see it though. That's fine. Um. Yeah, because I'm always curious about that. Because what what are the actual? How much? Yeah, One, okay. two, three, four, five. So there's six. Six to four. Six to four. Okay. And there's not much in the Yeah, it seems like they have a lot of... They take a lot of shots. They do. They take a good amount of shots. They take shots well. So I killed two before he killed even one. Yeah, I think you would have won that fight. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so again, not recommended. You really... Because, you know, what are you going to do with the, the Corruptors in the short term? Yeah. Uh, so that's... Ground, and that's nothing. four Larva. If you had four Mutas there, he would have won, obviously. Yeah, Because he was exactly. outnumbered you. Exactly. And that, that, that's just the basic math of Zerg versus Zerg, of like, okay, well, six Mutalisks beats four, mm -hmm. but I can afford four Corruptors, uh, so I'll just build, you know, and that can just just barely beat back his thing. You yeah. know, so it's, it's right now it's a matter of staying alive. Mm -hmm. um, and those Roaches doing so much damage, taking out his natural expansion, leveraging okay. everything as great as you can. Uh, you know, at, the, at that moment, it's all about leveraging what you have. What can I do? Yeah. I have a ground army, he doesn't. Okay, um, so many Zerg vs. Zerg games uh, in lower leagues and even earlier for me are lost on that fact alone of like, I have a Spire, I can build Mutalis. Mutalis are all over the place, but oh yeah, uh, 10 Mutalisks really can't kill 
20 roaches before they take down everything in your base. Yeah. Um, so just a lesson always being prepared to for Yeah, I'm always know. amazed when I watch when I'm watching you play against Zergs and like somebody's mutilists are hitting somebody's roaches. They just don't die. Yeah. It's almost it like there's so nobody long. fighting anybody. Yeah, it takes forever, forever, forever. So and we could fast forward a little bit. Yeah. I mean he definitely did some damage to you. You're yeah. definitely down on drones. Yeah. Um So, you know, and he's doing well, he's just doing the harassment. I mean, really, he has a lot of mutes. He could kind of, he might even be able to come in and take uh, a little bit of a win. But I have Spore Carl is calling down. Uh, it's the kind of situation where maybe he could win right now. Yeah. But if he did, he like if he didn't win that battle, he just put himself behind. You know. Yeah, totally. Uh, so he's being he's being safe, and I I, uh, I like that. I think that um, it's definitely what you're doing seems better than. Um Getting Hydras, especially when you've seen already that he has the banelings already, the banling nest already made. Yeah. So at what point would you, and um, I don't know if you do in this game, I know you said it was a little older, but at what point do you switch away from the Corruptors and start making Mutalisks again? Uh, really right about now. Yeah. Like, w once you've stabilized, once you're like, okay, I have my Spore Crawlers up, I have these guys out. Uh, yeah, the, the only problem with just having the corruptors on the map instead of the mutalisks is, like, the, the corruptors are just, at this point, are just denying him map control. Yeah. But they're not giving me map control. Yeah. You know, like they're just a counter to his map control, being like, all right, well, you can have your mutalisks out to kill any of my drones, but I'm just you know, we're trying to expand, but I'm gonna sit here and stop that from happening. Yeah. But obviously, that's just too much now. Yeah. And let's keep fast forwarding. Yeah, I think he just did a lot of he did a too much economic damage. Yeah, damage like, to like I feel I'm like. just really, really, really good. Um, but the base is well you know defended. your drone counts are pretty close. Yeah, and the base is well defended, so there's not much he can really do to my base. And this is the moment in Zerg vs Zerg where it's like, okay, well I can't break him. I do have the map control advantage, so let me expand. That's what he's doing. He's yeah, they're very smart. That's a good point. He's double expanding, which is even smarter because as you'll see I go to expand I see that I'm like oh cool bye bye yeah. yeah at the same time you know he has this going down and I might not see that or maybe I do <laughs> <laughs> fear guns akimbo okay but this right here is just I'm sorry it makes it makes no fucking sense <laughs> yeah I'm like all right dude you're winning the game you are winning the game with your mutilus, just make more mutilus. Place, just build more mutilus. You're gonna win. Um, you know, get some upgrades if you really feel like doing something else. Get some roaches. Why are you exposing? Like, you know, it's like going out into the cold with your with your balls hanging out. with your out. balls hanging out, being like, like you know what? Well, I can do it. Yeah. And so I'm why being, not? I'm being bold and brave. There's like no. There's a lot of reasons why not. Well, it's mainly because there's people like me out there walking the streets in New York. Who, who will kick you in the balls. Who will just bite your fucking ball yeah. at being like, like, oh my god, is that grapefruit? I want a smoothie. Yeah, totally. So, Does, Do grapefruits make good smoothies? Uh, you Have you ever had a grapefruit smoothie? No, I'm kind of terrified of that. That sounds awful. Yeah, it sounds really bad, I was going to say. It sounds, you know, it, I feel like it would taste like ch like a s thick bile. Yeah. It's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I think it would taste really bad. Yeah. You ever have a really bad, like, orange sherbet? Um, I feel no. like it would taste like that. No. Whoa! What's happening Whoa! What? What is happening? That's crazy. It's like I caught it right in the middle of the animation. That's so yeah. awesome. I'm so cool. Yeah. Does it come out of the the shoot? <laughs> it's, like, it it's like a Zerg blowhole. Yeah. <laughs> the hatchery, hatchery orgasm. That's, oh wow! I never noticed that it the the creep it gets blows out, out of the, the blowhole hole. and yeah. lands on the ground. Yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I like Zerg. <laughs> yeah. I do that sometimes in the toilet when I eat too many burritos. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. You vomit from burrito? Um, no, 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 not vomit. Oh, oh, the other blowhole. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't thinking about your other blowhole. Just upside down. I already explained that Zerg are like poo. Yeah. You did. That you did. Yeah. I like to use this moment to say, donate, motherfuckers. We have a donation button to buy ourselves a video camera. 
um, which we're really excited about on StarCraft.org. So give us money. We want to do some really awesome live uh, stuff, um, which if, you've, if you're a fan of the show and you've seen our past episodes, I'm sure you know what that means. Know what that means. It's awesome. And uh, we just want to do it bigger and better than before. Okay, so obviously this guy is ahead. He could have just pushed in one. But he had to do this thing. And now for the final point again, this episode can be called Don't Hydralisk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I just, I really just want to, this is part I remember of this game. Uh, army. 122 army to 82. That's yeah. ridiculous. He's winning. Especially in a mirror matchup. Like, that's, that's not even close. Yeah. You know, like, I have 80 things. He has 122. Your 80 things are banelings. Yeah. It's like he's Wait, about to on. win. Do, do the thing where you select all the, all the hydras. Okay. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, yeah, thanks. That's nuts. It's like, <laughs> like, what the fuck were you doing, dude? <laughs> like, ah, God. So I can watch it all day. It's kind of like it. Zerg fireworks. Yeah. See, the reason, like, I'm happy doing Zerg for Zerg because Zerg die in Zerg for Zerg no matter what. Yeah. Zerg loses. I like because Zerg wins no matter what. <laughs> yeah. And and just, I mean, just watch them pop. They just do such great area of effect damage. Like, one Baneling won't kill the Hydras at all, but they do such great area of effect. So, like, two over the area of effect will kill such like a huge 20, number. Like 20 Hydras, yeah. Like 20,000 Hydras. About 20,000, yeah. God, like, look at that. What the hell is happening? We should make one of those. You know those Hitler videos on YouTube? We do oh, here. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the Banelings being the Americans. <laughs> we should make... No, no, you missed the whole point. No. <laughs> we should make a, a Zerg Hitler video. Okay. Yeah. For what? <laughs> for Zerg, for Banelings. Okay, cool. And suddenly, I mean, you know, again, I think that point speaks for itself. Why the, why are you doing that? Yeah. You know? Because um, even, even um, you know, he has Hydras. I don't even have a Hydra Den down because I'm not an idiot. But even Roaches, like I have four Roaches, he has four Hydras, and I have some rings. Like, Roaches are so good against Hydras, too, especially on a cost-efficiency thing. Uh, a Hydra will obviously beat a Roach because they're more, you know, they're more powerful. But roaches take a lot of damage, yeah. And you can build more of them because they're cheaper. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll see Zerg players building roaches against hydras because, okay, well maybe you have ten hydras and I have fourteen roaches, uh, and your hydras are stronger, but I have four more roaches and I still kind of win. So all right, yeah, whatever. I made enough points. Um. I, now, the only thing I'm really curious about after this yeah. is, the only question I have, is it seems like, maybe this is, maybe I'm just right about this, it seems like it's really, it really comes down to, um, in the mid-game, about mutalists. Yeah. It comes down to, like, I don't know, like, I feel like it's like a lot like StarCraft 1. Yeah. StarCraft 1 always came down to mutalisk, right? Mm-hmm. And... The one cool thing about StarCraft 2 I love with... it, it A lot of times, it all leads to that avenue if, you, if you're able to get to the mid-game. Um, but StarCraft 2 has the option of Infestors. So a lot of times, you know, say you're equal to your opponent in mid-game of like, okay, he has 10 mutes, I have 10 mutes. Yeah. Or I'll say mutas because I get bitched at when I say mutes. Yeah, I say mutes too. I guess you know, it's just our it's thing. It's easier. They could be our thing. It's an amateur thing. They're yeah, mutes. It's the group home slang. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, he has 10 mutes, and I have 10 mutes. And then it kind of becomes a battle. Like, it can go two ways. It can become a battle of, like, okay, well, who gets, who gets, you know, the 12th mute while the other guy's 11th mute? Or yeah. who gets that quick advantage? Who gets into that base quick? So but also, it becomes, it becomes a who gets the first infester. Oh my god. <laughs> What is that? I don't know. There's a, snake. There's a snake in my pants. Yeah, me too. Um, like our it, snakes are wrapping. Our snakes are hugging. Yeah. So um, if you're ever in a, in a situation where you're equal on mute lists and you're able to eke out that infester den and yeah. that one infester, God, it's so exciting because you're like, I got the infester. And he comes into your base and you just uh, fungal growth everything. 
and so they win. What I want to ask is, so in StarCraft One, like you were talking about, when it was Muta versus Muta, yeah, um, it would really come down to getting this. Who get if you're behind on mutes, you can you can come back by using Scourge. Yeah. Well, um, so you would say that you think that the, the only thing that I don't think we really saw is if you're behind on mutes. In StarCraft Two, what do you use to come back? Do you think that the, the Infestor has potential there? Or? Yeah, well, I mean, if you're if it's a tight battle, yeah, Infestors are huge. Do you think Infestors it, against anything air is like? Do you think fungal God. growth? Fungal growth is a good way to if you're behind on mutes and trying to catch up, or is it something? Or is it? It's tough when you're behind on mutalists because yeah. when you're behind on mutalists, really your focus is to not be behind on mutalists anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know. It's so situational. I, mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I can't just... It's the kind of thing where recommending getting an investor pit is tough because it's like, well, you might die in trying to change this into that. Yeah. Maybe you just get some sport colonies and call it a day. Yeah, so what do you... So my question to you then is, like, how... Um, how do you... Like, here I feel like you were able to come back because he made a mistake and got some Yeah, he made a, a, a major tech switch mistake. But if... but if I, had... I lost the game. Like, this game... I, this was... I consider this game a loss. Yeah. I mean, it just, he just screwed up. But if that's... But that's not really the point. My, my yeah. point. My point is that... So, normally, when you're behind on mutes like that, mm-hmm. um, what do you do to come back and catch up with mutes? Because it seems like what you were doing here wasn't really super-duper working great, which was making corruptors. Maybe if you had stopped making corruptors and made more mutes, or... I, I, yeah, it's tough. Like, what, I mean, what would be your advice? So, closing out on this, right. I, this is really great. I, 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 feel, I feel like we explained a lot of ZBZ. What are your closing thoughts on, on that point of like, if you're behind on mutes, how do you deal with that situation usually? Do you just I, GG? I think no. You know, well, you can. I, <laughs> seriously, no. I mean, it's it is, you know, like I know a lot of pro games work that way. Of okay, well, um, he got me this first, and I'm kind of screwed. And there's nothing I can really do. Whereas I feel like in ladder, there's a little more give. Mm-hmm. There's a little more room to be like, okay, well, this guy doesn't. This guy might just screw up. Yeah. Um. So it's a hard recommendation. You know, it, it is so situational dependent. I, I think the the number one thing that you need to do to stay in the game is protect your base using units that aren't easily countered. So, I think spore colonies are incredible against mutalists. Yeah. Uh, you know, but that's just it. That's reactionary. Still, it's you're protecting yourself from, you know, just getting run over, and you're not able to think about the next phase of the game, which is map control to get your third base. Um, so getting a few mules out, you know, if you feel like it. It could go either way. Like at, at that moment, I needed corruptors. I needed to get the corruptors out. I didn't have my Evo down. No, I totally I agree with your choice at the moment. And so, but say, like, say I did have my Evo down, and I had already, and I, so I was kind of safe. And he's just like a few mules up on me. Mm-hmm. Then totally, I would totally get my investor pit. You know, like just knowing that, like, I can't hold this off forever. And he's yeah. probably expanding right now, and he's trying to, and like his mistake right then is going to be okay. He's expanding, and he's still trying to break me. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he you know tries to break me again and I have that one investor out, I get the fungal growth off. I kill all of his mutalists. Now suddenly I have map control. Yeah. And then you go and take down the expansions and you reverse the situation. Uh, it, but it is so situational dependent. So very very complex. Maybe we'll do an episode about that at some point. Yeah, I, I don't future. know. Like, uh, there's not recommendations on that really. It's just it's just knowing your options and knowing what's best in yeah. your situation at that moment. Of so being like, it, like it's usually best. I feel like with investors. When there's not a huge difference, when there's maybe a slight differential, yeah. where you're not by building that investor, you're not opening yourself completely to being killed in that moment, but you know where you're just barely like walking that thin line of being like I could get killed right now, but if I get this out, this will totally shift in my favor. Yeah, it's that risk. It's that slight risk, and it needs to be the right situation, as with any tech. So, so um, it's complex. We'll talk about it another day. Yeah. Or not, because I don't, I don't know that much about it. <laughs> well, at some point in the future, we'll talk about it. Maybe. Maybe. Or we'll hire y- you. You'll hire me? Yeah, or someone else. Cool. Um, do we want to? you want to tell the SFSF story, or is it... We've gone on, I think we've gone on too long we've already. Gone, well, whatever, they can close out. You can tell your story. You can save it for next time. Uh, we'll talk about it later. All right. Cool. GG. GG! Bye.